have a business that you love means that you have clients that you really enjoy working with. And the kinds of clients that you probably enjoy working with are kind, thoughtful people. And those, I'm so grateful, are the kinds of clients and students that I've attracted. And I notice that it's really with authentic marketing that tends to attract these kinds of people versus the typical kind of marketing that we are taught out there is marketing that's kind of pushy, that's salesy, that doesn't really trust the viewer or the reader, trying to manipulate them because we're afraid of losing them. It's fear-based marketing. So I've surveyed my students, the, again, the kind of kind, thoughtful people that you would want as clients. I surveyed them about the kinds of marketing tactics that turn them off. And I want to share with you just a couple of quick ones here that for you to be aware of and maybe to either stop doing if you're thinking of doing it or are doing it or to, or to, to know that you don't have to do it. One is lead magnets. Okay, what is a lead magnet? A lead magnet is where you go to a website and they have some wonderful gift for you, but you have to put in your email address right, in order to get their wonderful gift. It's some kind of download, it's some kind of video, some kind of video series or some article or boat or special report or whatever. So lead magnets are supposed to generate leads, right? But what happens is that the people who opt in, they're being tempted by that download or that bonus or whatever, and they want that thing, but they're not really expecting ongoing emails from you. They don't that's not why they really signed up for. It. They want that they want that download. Because if, if they want your ongoing emails, why don't you just say, hey, sign up for my newsletter. You're going to get ongoing emails at this rhythm about this or this or this. That's what I do, right? So a lead magnet tends to create a strained or awkward relationship right away with your subscriber because, again, they want the thing. They felt like, oh, gosh, I have to put an email address in to get the thing. And once they get the thing, then you're starting, you're sending them emails that they didn't intend to sign up for. Most of them don't. All right. Yes. You, they check the box that says you'll get, can, but that's not an intention. That's just, okay, well, whatever. It's like a shrug, like, okay, I guess I'm going to get, you know, it's not, it's not intended. So stop doing lead magnets. Just offer an email newsletter that they'll get, you know, your, your best articles about X, Y, Z. That's what I do. And it's worked really well for me. You build a really good email list of people that you actually are engaging with you, that you actually want to talk with. You actually are the right people for you because they are intending to get ongoing series from you because that they're interested enough. And so you're more motivated, therefore, to write to these people that you know are actually wishing to hear from you. Okay. So League Magnets was one of those things. The second one is sales funnels. Sales funnels. Now, you might be surprised because sales funnels are everywhere these days. And, you know, any, any marketing expert you learn from probably is trying to teach you to use a sales funnel. Okay. A sales funnel is basically a carefully designed indoctrination process for somebody who doesn't know you to buying your low cost product. Okay. Now, that sounds great for a business owner. Sure, why wouldn't I want to make someone go from barely knowing me to buying my first thing? Wouldn't that be great? I just have to write better emails. I have to design my funnel better, et cetera, et cetera. But let me ask you this question. If you're trying to get to know a business, would you like to get into their sales funnel? Would you like to – would you willingly sign up for – a process where they're trying to indoctrinate you and convert you. Well, these are all religious terms, isn't it? Isn't that interesting, right? It's a cult. They're trying to indoctrinate and convert you into buying their low cost thing. Would you would you willingly sign up for that? Most people would say no. Why don't you just give me information that I that I would find helpful and let me make my own choice at my own time rather than at the rhythm that you think that I should be making it at. So the bottom line for all of this is really the golden rule, okay? It's treating the subscriber or the potential client as how you want, how you want to be treated, okay? Or don't treating them 
the way that you don't want to be treated. And it's so simple, but I've been, I've been earnestly trying to use the golden rule in my business now for about five years. Before that, I was doing the mainstream way, which is not the golden rule. But about five years now, I've been using the golden rule in, in other words, authentic marketing. And I have built a business that has just gotten easier and easier and easier because I have more and more and more loyal fans and a trusting relationship with them. They trust me. I trust them. I trust their autonomy to decide when they want to decide. They trust me to be upfront and honest and caring in the way that I market to them. And it's just something that I recommend to everybody. So if you want to attract more thoughtful, kind clients and buyers, use authentic marketing. Let go of any kind of marketing that is pushy or manipulative or fearful. That you're afraid you're going to lose them if you don't make them do something now. Let that go and trust in people's autonomy that if you, if you respect that, they will also respect and like your stuff more. I hope this helps. My name is George Cow. I love talking about authentic marketing and authentic business. So if you like this video, you'll probably like my other ones too. So maybe I'll see you in the next video. All right. I wish you well.